Our sprite and drawing code has all been a bit rough and ready, so now we'll look at how to do things properly with the sprite class to manage processing and drawing sprite data. We begin by creating our new sprite class. The class is initiated with one argument, the sprite data. This is an array of frames, each specifying the x and y position on the tilesheet, the width and height of the frame, and optionally the frame duration. Our sprite stores an animated flag which is true if there's more than one frame, the total frame count, the total animation duration in milliseconds, and a flag of whether or not the sprite animation should be looped. If there's more than one frame, we loop through them all, setting the frame duration if one has not been set, adding the frame duration to the total sprite duration, and looking for a loop flag. Once all frames have been processed, we'll set the frames property of our sprites to the modified data array. We also need to create a draw method for our sprite class that takes as its arguments a time value, normally the elapsed game time, and the x and y position at which the sprite should be displayed. We calculate which frame will be drawn if there are multiple frames, by first checking if the time value is greater than the total sprite duration and if the sprite does not loop in which case we just want the last frame. Otherwise, if the sprite loops, we'll modify the time value to find the modulus of a division by the sprite's duration, and then we'll loop through the frames until we find the one that should be displayed at this time. Next, we see if this frame has a drawing offset. If not, we assume the offset to be 0, 0, and draw our frame to the canvas. We'll now go through and enclose all of our sprite data in our code inside a new sprite constructor. Our tile drawing code now calls the tile types sprite properties draw method at the task position. And for any placed item stacks, the corresponding item types sprite draw method is called. And for objects, the object types sprite draw method.
Similarly for the roof tiles. And for our player character, the draw method is called for the appropriate direction in the character's sprites array. Finally, our drawing code is updated for items in the player's inventory to behave in the same way. We can now go ahead and remove the now defunct getFrame method. And lastly, in our Windows onload method, We'll remove the code we used for processing animated tile sprites. Now we handle sprites loading, processing and drawing in a dedicated class. We can animate anything we're drawing from our tile sheet should we wish to do so with consistent, predictable results. It also makes writing drawing code in our main drawing loops faster and more readable.